Hey, hi, Auto Gyro here. Since the announcement about the November update, I've taken some time off from Deep Rock Galactic. In part because of the balancing changes that are going to change how the game plays, and mostly because I've already finished the season pass and don't want to deal with Lithophage any more than I have to. As you can see here, the infected bug spawn rate is still insane. I've gotten on for the holiday event, for those friends that care to do the assignments to get the amazingly creepy clown mask and last year's cosmetics. The double season progress helps everyone get closer to finishing the season pass. And I've enjoyed some aspects of this Halloween event. On our very first mission with a skull, it froze a nanocyte breeder in mid-air, and letting the skull zoom around cackling through the initial spawns has been really useful. And as usual, the developers have outdone themselves with the decorations in the space rig. But I've been playing a lot of things other than Deep Rock. Of course, I've gone back to Team Fortress 2. It's Scream Fortress time, and all the Halloween loadouts are out. It's fun to see all the people come back for the nostalgia and getting to play the community maps. It's interesting to watch the community fill in for the lack of development by Valve. The servers are now full of people who know how to kick bots, which is a welcome change. I've also been playing Bob's Angels mods on Factorio, which takes all my brain. It's been fun, and while progress has been slow, it's also been steady. Having an extra level of possible production and the addition of intermediate steps for most core production, it gets a little crazy. We also started with a C block map. That's starting with a single block of land, a chest of starting equipment, and nothing but sea water and ocean floor to build all that you see here. I've also gone back to Core Keeper for a new friend who found me here on YouTube. For them, it's a new game. I haven't played any of the updates for nearly a year, so starting a newly generated world from scratch has been a treat. I love the new pets and being able to level them up and have their company when spelunking. And I love sledgehammers a lot. I'm still figuring out the new fishing mechanics and how the progression now goes compared to when we only had the first three interior worlds. I could see Core Keeper appealing to a lot of Deep Rock Galactic players. It's cooperative PvE. You get to play with your friends. There's a lot of resource gathering, and those resources help you progress. There are multiple progression trees that affect your character's perks, weapons, tools, and armor. It's not as technical as DRG, honestly, but we found it fun, and the progression has been satisfying. It's been a chill time, and we get to hit the bosses on our own terms. The developer and the community are solid, and the updates happen on a regular basis. Another game that I've returned to has been Shatterline, an early access game that has both PvE and PvP game modes. I've concentrated on the PvE, where there was a whole update to smooth the expedition mode out. There's still some rough spots, but it's fun to see the progress they've made from two seasons ago in the variety of bosses and encounters in the PvE open world. They're still far more limited than I'd like, but progress is progress. I like the roguelike co-op a lot, and there's definitely more technical meat to Shatterline compared to Core Keeper, and that appeals to me. The classes are interesting, but the find random weapons as you go in the expeditions does mess with some of the characters' abilities. Playing Brissa without a sniper rifle is quite painful. There is character progression, and each of the operatives gets stronger through resources found as you get into the tougher and rougher levels of expedition. I still haven't gotten too much further than three sectors into a game, but I love the shotguns in the game. There's a lot of interesting interactions between the different classes of operatives and variation among operatives of the same class that makes them appealing. And unlike some other games, playing only PvE doesn't handicap progress in the game, and some of the perks are only available for PvE, which I highly approve of, as some of these enhancements would make PvP a nightmare. For more PvE fun, I had RoboQuest, and a friend asked to play it with me, and I really enjoyed it. There looks like a good long progression route, and plenty to shoot, and there's been a recent update that's really expanded the gameplay as well. It made me wonder if DRG paved the way for more co-op PvE shooters without microtransactions with its success. The new update to Ship of Fools with new ship types, more light levels, and better rewards for beating them, and even more interesting upgrades really had me wanting to play that again. Having more progress to make is fun. 
The team play in Ship of Fools can be really intense, and I love the choices you get to make on the randomly generated map. Also, with the recent sale on Borderlands 3, I've picked it up and intend to try it with friends as well, because I really enjoyed Borderlands 2, and I hear that the gameplay in Borderlands 3 is better. For those that love PvP, I got into the playtest of the finals for just an hour, and I've linked the fastest, most comprehensive guide to starting the game by Swalese. It's super fast, probably a bit more intense than I'm comfortable with, but it's really obvious this game is going to have a really high skill ceiling. The more you learn, the better you'll do. I really need a fixed map for PvP, as figuring out flank routes and knowing how to play the objectives is such a huge part of playing well. The class differentiation is interesting, and I think roughly balanced. It's early on in its development, so we'll see how it goes. And I've also been sampling a mix of single-player games and pure co-op games. Hades has always been a comfort to me. Dave the Diver, Nobody Saves the World, Cocoon, and Katana Zero have been fun, and I want to explore the multiplayer mode in Nobody Saves the World. For pure co-op, it's been a lot of played up. The frequent updates include a lot of seasonal challenges and interesting recipes. The other night, I heard Milligan say, on his stream that we, which I took to be the players and community of Deep Rock Galactic, are in the desert now. And while I don't know exactly what he meant by it, I felt it. Roaming the wilderness, far from the familiar home base of the space rig, and the well-worn and comfortable tools, weapons, and companions of Hoxies, and the dangers we know well. It's been interesting. I won't say it hasn't been, but I'll be glad when things land later this month. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Hope you enjoyed the Halloween content, and maybe saw something here that'll encourage you to explore as well. Auto Gyro.